Hello everybody, welcome to Inside the Score, and this is the second part in Once Upon a Romance. Uh, in this episode, we'll be talking about the uh, the orchestration and the arrangement behind this piece. And I want to take you through section by section, and instead of going through every single track and telling you what I'm doing in there, I'll kind of point out the key features um, and why I made some of the decisions that I did. Um, you know, there's obviously a lot to talk about, so uh, let's get right into it. <clears throat> and um, you can see right here that I've got all my tracks color coded to according to uh, instrument groups. And so let's just start right away. So you'll hear it opens up on a harp, which I've got here. And this is the Berlin Symphonic Harps, so I just use one of their glissando patches. Now I really wanted a nice um, full string opening, so that's what I was going for here. I was having the strings kind of do their own sweet line, if you will. So if I kind of highlight these. Using a variety of seventh chords and using cinematic studio strings to kind of give it that warm lush feel and then the basses come in. So you already get kind of a full warm sound out of the out of the gate, you know? It gives you that kind of... Um, and then you hear there, that B flat, the do, that's that, uh, I think it's a bassoon or it's the English horn. It might be the English horn. Let's see. Yeah, the English horn right there. I love the oboe and the English horn. It just gives it such a pining, sweet quality that you can't get with other instruments. Okay, cool. So now you hear that the uh, the strings are doing a really nice bed, right? And this is mainly in the lower strings. So I, I, I am using violins, but I'm just making sure that, you know, you know, making sure that it doesn't, it's not obtrusive or anything. They transition very smoothly, so it lets the oboe and the, or sorry, the bassoon and the solo horn work together. So this, these are the two instruments that I'm using. And then bassoon by itself. So laid together. The timbres are quite similar. They're both very full and kind of round, so it kind of makes sense to layer them together, and it really enhances the overall color, which I love. So this bassoon is from uh, Berlin Woodwinds, and this brass or this solo horn is from Cinematic Studio Brass, which is really lovely. And so now, in the second half of the theme, the uh, the strings now take over. Nothing really complicated going on here. I mean, I, I mainly have the violins, the violins one and uh, doing the main melody. Violins two are providing some harmony. Um, I used Berlin strings here to kind of give it a, uh, a, a, to layer in the melody so it sounds more defined and you can hear the melody clear. So if I want to play that, let me see. Right here. If I layer that in with the violence one. Maybe this is still same minus two strings. Yeah, I think so. So it's very easy to hear that melody. And that's another point I want to bring up. Like it's all about balance. Um, if the melody is struggling to come up, it might not always be a mixing issue. Um, like with EQ and compression, it might simply just be a, a matter of uh, adjusting your volume balances between your instruments. Um, so generally, I recommend uh, sticking with doing your static mix. So that kind of means pulling down all your faders and adjusting the volumes, doing that first before you touch your EQs and stuff. Um, and this is a technique that Graham Cochran from The Recording Revolution recommends, and it definitely works in all genres. Um, so this one's no exception. Here you'll notice I have CineOrc. Uh, CineOrc is the CineSamples product that basically has pre-orchestrated uh, beds of chords, which is really, really nice. So I layered that in to kind of give it a nice, rich color. So it has like basically all the orchestral instruments that you need 
to make a really nice bed. Okay. So it's basically it's in at work, uh, my strings doing the bed, and then the solo horn there. Suspended symbol comes in as well as the harp. I love I love it when you know the harp comes in, gives it that Disney feel, and does an uh, uh, you know ascending glissando. And this is actually the same glissando I used at the very beginning, I believe. So let me just play that by itself. Oh, love it. Little tubular bells. Love that instrument. Where is it? Where are you? A little more cymbals there. Now, now I notice I did that cymbal hit there, that ch the crash. And that was because I was going to that F major chord like I discussed in the previous video, so I wanted a little more impact there. And then once the listener, you know, gets used to that, then I can pull back on the E flat major chord after that, so. Now, I'll let it naturally pull back. Right? And now, and then draw back in. So now you can hear the strings are still doing that bed uh, in the in the melody, but what instruments are taking over now? It's the flute legato one and two. Those are doing the melody and harmony. So let's hear that. So first of all, let's see solo oboe. The oboe and the flute are layered in together. So the, these are both from Berlin Woodwinds. Flute 1 is from uh, Berlin Woodwinds main collection. The solo oboe is from the expansion B. Really, really nice color. And then Flute 2 is going to come in with its really lovely line there to give it a little more harmonic content. And I use in the English horn as well to kind of layer in that uh, melody and octave lower, so it fills in the frequency spectrum a little more. Give it another color. So that's the bed of everything. Right. Okay, and then with everything else. Now in between, while these melody notes are holding, I'll have the uh, some other instruments of different families come in in the come in between those held notes to give it some uh, counter melody just to fill it in a little bit. So you hear that do 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 do. First, I wanted the cellos to do that do 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 do, and then the second time, I wanted the second horn to do it. So there you can kind of play around with your instrument combinations. So, you know, it sounds quite different each time. And now we expand. Notice here I have the tuba legato, so now I layer in some more low end because this is kind of the reiteration of this ridge theme. So you, you need more harmonic support, uh, a little more in the low end. Again, the, the percussion is doing its thing uh, with the timpani, you know, I love timpani. Gives it those rolls and hits, so... Right? And I put in a little sub-boom, actually. Uh, I can't exactly say why, but I just felt it sounded really good in this context, like in this repetition of the melody. Just that touch of low end helps it to cut through and really feel emphatic, which I really like, so... Little harp dissension there uh, during that held note. Do do hold you right. So lots of stuff happening. There's no, um, there's not a lot of empty space. So that's quite important. Again, the violins hold the notes. Do do do, and then in in underneath do do. So it's like the horns coming in. Um, you see the solo horn, doo, 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 and then they all culminate in that E major chord when the energy builds. There we go. 
Now snare drum. Horns. Da -da -da -da. So that's this horn ensemble right here. This is Cinematic Studio Brass. A lot of this is Cinematic Studio Brass, actually. Um, solo horn is comes from there. Uh, horn ensemble comes from there. That's the four horns. Actually, the trumpet legato, I believe that is from... That's from the 90s retro trumpets from uh, Cine Samples. Uh, tuba, Berlin Brass. You know, tuba is from Berlin Brass, and so are the two horns here. Trombone ensemble from Cine Brass. Monster Low Brass from Cinebrass, Two Horn Ensemble from Cinebrass, Six Horns from Cinebrass. Okay, fine. Cine Samples and Akasha Tools and CSB coming in there. All three different colors, but very, very nice when they work together. Now, to get these buildups sounding really good, I what I like to do is I have all my instruments doing a nice crescendo, but at the same time, I like to have the harp tinkling in there at the same time, so. As well as if, you know, having some runs, like woodwind runs or string runs. In this case, I decided to use Hollywood winds for that uh, ascending run to hit at the same time as the downbeat, so. So now the trumpets are providing the melody, uh, the strings as well, so it, now it feels very full and rich, uh, which I love. And the woodwinds are taking slight, uh, a little more of a back seat, they're harmonizing a little more, uh, providing more of a textural color. So tr trumpets soaring, you know. So this is 90s retro trumpets right here. And it's combined with those strings, cinematic studio strings, it's really, really sounds really nice to me. Now right there, da, 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 I wanted to have a little bit of a dip in energy. So instead of having the, the trumpets continue that melody uh, really brassy, I wanted to bring in the bassoon, I wanted to bring in the flutes, and the oboe have a little bit uh, of a different color there before it culminates back into that brassy, stringy melody. So right before that, that was all strings and brass, and then suddenly we pull back with some woodwinds. And suddenly pull back. Now push that no strings come back. Horns. Now the horn ensemble takes over. Right now trumpets take over. Track. Where is this trumpets ensemble coming from? Is that cinematic studio brass or is it? Oh, it's cinematic studio brass. Sorry. Yeah, it's not nineties retro. I think I tried nineties retro trumpets, but it just um, the color wasn't quite right for this piece. So. Hear that very uh, that that piccolo cut in the very top. Do 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 do. That's right here. Okay. Little symbol there to signify the end. There's the blockage field. Just tinkles of dizzy right there. This is from Berlin Percussion. Now I want the flute to go up the octave, and then a little clock to finish it off. T crescendo, pull back on the mod wheel, cinematic studio strings finishes everything. All right, so um, like I said, I didn't go track by track, but you can kind of see the decisions I made and the key features of the piece. Uh, and you know, I decided to like a lot of this is textural color. You'll see here uh, for all these strings. I sometimes I have some tremolo stuff coming up. That's especially when I'm building into the new section, like when I'm coming back into the theme. This is from Cine Auric, Bimbalali Tremolos. 
So you don't actually hear the tremolo by itself, but it gives it that little extra excitement and energy that's really needed to build up into a big climax. And um, in the low octaves, I think this is from Metropolis Arc, but it gives it that low end that's needed as well. And like I said, when you have these bigger sections, you need the low end to fill it up, but not overcrowd it, over, obviously. But just something to give it that meat and uh, that weight. So that's what I chose there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, this is the second part of the walkthrough again. And uh, the final part, we'll talk about the mixing and processing and all that fun stuff. So uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. And until then, I will see you in the next video. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.